Oh, there's one. Hey, yo. Oh, it feels like I've got it hooked really funky. What do we got here? Is it a bass? Oh, it is a bass. Not a bad one either. Well, how's it going, folks? And welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, we got a topic that y'all have asked for for a long time, and it is this lure right here. This lure right here called the Chandelier, the Umbrella Rig, or most often known as the Alabama Rig. How is this even legal? And how can you guys catch fish on it on your home bodies of water? Let's talk about it. This lure right here is one of the most highly requested video topics on my channel over the past few years. And especially, I think last year and the year before, I made a few videos fishing the Alabama rig, but I did not actually teach you guys how to rig it and how to fish it for yourselves. I am so excited that you guys are here to learn with us today. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button to join the team. You know, this channel is all about helping you guys become better bass anglers, and this video is no different. So let's jump into the content. This lure right here is the Alabama rig. Uh, a little bit of a, a history on, on this style chandelier style lure. I believe they started a long time ago in the saltwater community uh, for, for you know big offshore fish trolling situations and then somewhere along the line somebody decided to make a smaller version and put swim baits on it and test it out for bass and it worked unbelievably well. It took the tournament community by storm. I think uh, Rick Klun won a tournament in Alabama, maybe on Gunnersville, on this specific rig. And I think it was two or three years before every single pro tour in the country had the Alabama rig banned from tournaments because it was just too effective. And at the time that the Alabama rig was first exploding, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, I picked one up and thought to myself, if the tournament organizations are banning this thing, it must be so easy. And I can't tell you how wrong I was. The Alabama rig is not an easy lure to throw. It takes some time to really understand what the lure is doing down there and how to properly throw it uh, around deep and shallow structure. And that was just something I didn't understand when I first had it. I thought, oh, you got five baits on there. You got five hooks, five times the chances of catching a fish. Just cast it out there, wind it back in, and you're gonna catch big bass. And sometimes that's the case. But as I'll show you guys in this video today, it is a lure that you have to have a highly specialized uh, set of gear for, as well as a highly specialized understanding of your bodies of water and the fish that are in that. The most notable tournament to me that I can think about, the Alabama rig, I think his name was Casey Martin. He was on FLW Circuit Breaker Season 1, and he won on Lake Chickamauga on the Alabama rig. I'll have some clips pop up here on the screen um, if I'm allowed to show those. But uh, it was just a, an awesome display with an, a huge Alabama rig. I think it had more than five hooks. Um, at the time that was allowed and he just put on a clinic on offshore ledges using the Alabama rig. There he is. Oh, big one. Oh, jeez. This is a big, big fish. It's one. Two big ones. Two giants. One got off. One got off. Crap. It's an eight pounder here still though. Big one still on. Ooh. I had two. I had two. The five pounder jumped off. So when you're first looking at an Alabama rig, I'm gonna admit, it can seem quite daunting because you look, it's got all sorts of blades and, and swivels and, and snaps, and of course you have to have five swim baits on there. And so the first thing I wanna say is that an Alabama rig is expensive. A-rig fishing is, is I kinda liken it to swim bait, glide bait fishing. The lures themselves are expensive, and the gear that you need to properly throw an Alabama rig is expensive. And so, especially for you pond guys, this might not be a video for you. When it comes to pond fishing, usually when you get snagged, you can't retrieve your lure. And when you have a lure like this that has five hooks on it and is relatively heavy, this is probably... I don't know, three, three and a half ounces, it sinks fast. And so if you're pond fishing, I would recommend against an Alabama rig. Now they have other versions that are smaller, four wire, three wire, as opposed to the five wire that I have here. You can also just rig up one of the swim baits to have a hook and the rest of the four to be dummies, as I'll talk about here in a second. But I would just say, this is mostly a bass boat and kayak thing and mostly in open water, not heavy cover situations. I hardly ever throw this around thick, shallow grass, actually really never throw it around thick shallow grass, uh, any kind of wood, 
That's usually a no. It's mostly just a rock and open water bait. But here in Wisconsin today, as you'll see in these fish catches, you are only allowed to have three hooks per line for the state law. In Minnesota, where I spend a ton of time, you can only have one hook per line. And in Texas, we can have all five. And so this here is a Wisconsin rigged Alabama rig. You have three of the swim baits that are on the A rig that have J heads with hooks. And the other two are, uh, I'll show you some B roll shots here, are just the same exact jig heads, but I have trimmed the hooks off so they're called dummies. Now the reason why you want to have dummies is because if you can get away with having five baits you want to have all five on here. This this Alabama rig is designed for five baits but you can only have three hooks. So the first thing you want to make sure you do is check with your state's regulations to see how many hooks you can legally have on one line on public water. Uh, the worst thing is if you get out in the lake or you're, you fish a tournament and you find out that you use an Alabama rig that had too many hooks. Just know how many hooks are legal in your state. So when you cast the Alabama rig out there and you're reeling it back in in, usually the baits are designed to look like a you know a swim jig head like this where the 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 Alabama rig sits in the water and swims and especially for this tactic uh, fish are going to be feeding looking up because bass's eyes are on the top of their head almost all the time they're going to be feeding from bottom to top they're going to be looking up and coming up to explode on whatever stuff is above them and so if you can only have three hooks on your Alabama rig I would suggest having the two on the bottom have hooks in the one that's longer in the middle but the two up top be dummies. Of course, if you're anywhere down south, it allows five hooks, of course, have all five on there. And then if you're in a state that only allows one hook per line, but you still want to throw an Alabama rig, it can still be an effective lure. Of course, you're going to get more bites, as you'll see from some fish catches or from some uh, some clips later on in this video. You're going to have fish, you know, come up and smash one of the dummies. You're going to set the hook and he's not actually going to have the, the specific swim bit with the hook. Oh, if you want to throw an Alabama rig in a state that only allows one hook, have it on the back one and make that swim bait a little bit bigger. Have all the rest of the four on the outside the same size and the one in the middle, maybe even a, a slightly different color and definitely a larger size with the hook on that one. You want to make sure that the one that the hook is on is kind of something different than the rest of the school. Bass love to key in on, on things that look um, like they're wounded or, or different than the rest of the pack uh, because it seems like easy prey. And so if your swim bait on the back or your swim bait on the back in the bottom as Wisconsin, the three, the three uh, of them, I want to have those different colors than the two on the top. So rigging an Alabama rig is fairly simple. They all come with uh, you know, usually five wires. Like I said, some have more, some have less. Um, and usually a swivel on the end of each wire and then a snap on the end of that swivel. And so you're going to rig up a swim bait just like you know your regular swim bait rigging. I've, uh, I've made videos about this in the past. You just want to rig up your swim bait, all five of them, which can lead to quite an expensive loss if you lose this thing. That's why I'm going to talk about uh, how to retrieve this thing safely here in a second. But you just rig all five swim baits on there. Of course, tie a very large knot, very large palomar, whatever kind of knot you want to use around the thing, and you are ready to go. Rigging this thing is really not all that hard. But when it comes to the gear you need, that is very, very important. I prefer to throw it on straight 25 pound fluorocarbon. I've got Seaguar uh, 25 pound Invisex fluorocarbon. I also throw my glide baits on 25 pound fluoro. And I just think in any clear water situation, if a fish is following this thing and he can somehow see a braided line, it may cause him to not eat it. Uh, and a lot of fish follow the Alabama rig before they actually commit to eating it. So I just want to minimize any possible uh, ways for that fish to get weary and not want to eat it. But if you're fishing around uh, deeper grass, braid is oftentimes a better thing to throw because if your A-rig gets a little bit of grass on it, braid has no stretch. So if you snap your rod tip, oftentimes it can it can kind of free your Alabama rig from the grass that it was stuck on. And fluorocarbon does have a little bit of stretch, especially on a long cast. So it would make that, uh, that you know, ripping out process a little bit more difficult. But like I said, I hardly ever throw the A-rig in grass. I usually throw it over deep rocks. The next thing that is very important is the reel. You need a reel that can handle the neutron style that can handle not only the line capacity of casting this lure super far because the heavier the lure the farther you can cast it 
You also need a reel that is strong enough gear-wise to wind this bait through the water. If you've ever thrown a deep diving crankbait, you probably know that when you're reeling it in, it almost feels like a chore. It is like heavy to reel it in. If you think that is strong, try throwing the Alabama rig. It's legitimately like trying to pull like a wet raccoon through the water. It, it is not easy to pull an Alabama rig. And if you're throwing it on a regular bait caster, especially a super light, um, low profile bait caster, it's not gonna have the strong enough gears to be able to effortlessly pull this through the water. And if you're fishing an A-Rig day after day, all day long, and you're trying to pull on a regular reel, your wrist is going to be tired and you're going to wear the gears on that reel out over time. It is just like a diesel truck versus a, a gas truck. Diesel has a whole lot more pounds of torque to be able to pull and tow heavy things. That is where the heavy duty reel comes in. This here is the Luz Super Duty 300 with the musky handle on there. I love the Super Duty 300 for A-Rigs. It is almost effortless to pull on an A-Rig, especially if I'm burning it. It honestly feels like, you know, if I was fishing a rattle trap on a regular rod reel that is what this reel feels like with the heavy a rig behind it and in order to get long casts and set the hook on a huge hooked bait like this you need a long heavy rod this here is the lose super duty 3 it is a 7 foot 11 heavy action rod it's a meat stick this is the longest rod that I have in my arsenal. I guess, take that back. I have an eight foot swim bait rod for glide baits, um, but it is a super long, stiff rod, but still has a little bit of give to the tip. Because one thing about this is that it is just like a singular swim bait rig. You don't want to get a bite on a singular swim bait on a spinning rod and just go to town on them and set the hook because you're going to rip that hook out of their mouth. And the same thing goes with this. It's just one of them or three of them or five of them. And so you want the, the, the fish to eat it. You want to reel faster and kind of load into that fish. And that's where the softer tip comes in. I have a fast action rod here, not an extra fast because I want a little bit of softer tip, but still have the 711 length and the heavy action. So enough talking about the lure itself. Let's get on the front deck and show you guys how to work an A-Rig to both not lose your Alabama rig on the bottom and get it snagged because it's expensive. This here is like $20. All the jig heads are probably $8. The swim baits are another $5 or $6. That's an expensive lure. So of course, we want to show you guys how to not lose it, but also how to catch fish on it. So let's jump up there. So the first thing that you want to know when it comes to Alabama rig fishing is the rate of fall, which means how fast your Alabama rig sinks. Because with every single cast, you're going to want to be counting down to, to make sure that your Alabama rig at least starts the cat or starts the retrieve in the right water column. So I'm going to have my Alabama rig all the way down here. That right there is about eight feet deep. Actually, you know what? I could uh, I could make it a little bit longer. That right there is probably about 10 feet deep right there. And so if I drop my Alabama rig in the water and count starting at one, I know how long it takes that bait to fall 10 feet. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, five and a half, six seconds to fall 10 feet. So if I'm fishing uh, an offshore point or a hump in 20 feet of water, I'm gonna cast it out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And just like that, I am very close to the bottom, if not at the bottom, of where I want to start my retrieve. That becomes very important when you're fishing over, uh, let's say, uh, an offshore area that has some, some structure on the top. You wanna make sure that you are not casting too shallow and letting your, your Alabama rig hit the bottom in a place that it shouldn't. So in certain scenarios, you know, whether you're fishing sand or, or pea gravel or small boulders, you can allow your Alabama rig to hit the bottom in those situations, uh, but especially when you're fishing around cover, you really cannot do that. So like I said, cast it out there, and let's say the fish are suspended. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I'm probably in about 12 to 14 feet over my 20 foot hump. And that will allow me to retrieve the bait where it's above those fish's head. Sometimes the fish are gonna be sucked to the bottom, sometimes they're gonna be suspended, and an Alabama rig is honestly one of the best search lures um, when it comes to deep water fishing if you are allowed to use it in your lake and in your tournaments. Now when it comes to the retrieve of your Alabama rig, you have to understand that when you first start your retrieve, that's the deepest it's probably going to be on the entire retrieve. So if you cast out there, let's let it sink to, 4, 12. All right, it is in 20 feet of water. And so if I start the retrieve now, it's gonna stay in 20 feet. 
but of course the, the closer it gets to the boat, the higher up it's going to rise. So if you're fishing a, an, an open area and the fish are sitting in you know 18 feet of water, you want to keep the bait in 16 for as long as you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the retrieve regular speed and then as soon as you know that you think the line as it gets closer to the boat will start pulling the bait up, I'm actually going to slow down my retrieve. So let me make a short cast to show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, it's down to 10 feet. So I'm going to retrieve just like this, kind of one, two, uh, a second, a second per turn. And then, I don't know, about halfway back to the boat, I will start slowing it down to uh, a turn every, you know, second and three quarters. And then I get a little closer to the boat, I will slow down my retrieve to uh, a turn every two seconds. And then as I get really close to the boat, I'm going to be slow rolling this thing because I want to keep it in the strike zone as long as possible. Because I have seen on live scope, fish follow it, follow it, follow it, and then it starts to rise and the fish loses interest. And so I want to make sure that my bait is staying in that strike zone as long as possible. Now when it comes to the actual retrieve itself, the actual like a action you impart on the bait, it's really simple. It's just a, a reel back in, occasionally giving it a reel pop, not a rod tip jerk. That works occasionally sometimes if the fish are very active, you're trying to trigger them. But one thing that I like to do is a little, little twitch like that, where you're reeling it, and all that does is it kind of pulls the wires together and flares them back out again, giving the appearance of the bait fish being scared by something. Any sort of movement you give the A-Rig on your rod is really going to accentuate and make it much, much larger down there than it is up here. So I prefer to do any of my action for the A-Rig on the reel itself. And the last thing I have for you guys before we get into some awesome fish catches here on the Alabama rig is the cast. Some lures you can get away with having the lure right on your rod tip and casting just like that. But just like swim baits, musky lures, anything big for big fish, you wanna have a little bit more line out. So I'm gonna have, I don't know, about two to two and a half feet of line. And this is where the, the rod is incredibly important. I'm gonna let the rod load up and do a full body, use your shoulders to kind of whip the A-Rig out there. So that right there is my standard A-Rig cast and I just launched that thing, I don't know, 40 yards. So I think y'all are fully equipped to go catch yourself some fish on the Alabama rig, but as always, I love to show you guys myself having an awesome time uh, catching fish on the lures that I talk about. So here's some great fish catches from my trip in Wisconsin. There's one. Caught him on the Alabama rig. Does not seem big. Why are you so dinky? Why are you so <laughs> small? Hungry. I'm the old chandelier right there. Again, he got uh, he got a side one. Hayden and I were just talking about. Usually, the the middle one is the one they bite, but uh, not all the time. Sometimes they bite that side one. Beauty. Scrub blank. Got him. That was awesome. Oh, I dropped the a rig on him. He smoked it. You watch him eat it. I, mean, I kind of looked away. Ooh, that's fun. That is fun. Hey, so a rigs stop? they're not just for uh, for casting they're and retrieving. Ooh, you can God. you can oh, drop it. Wait, you guys cast them? <laughs> yeah. Who knew that? That's a good one. Bring them in. Yes. Beauty. Ooh, 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 ooh. Look at that guy right there. Gorgeous color, dude. Like these fish are just beautiful. Got him, dude. It's the one that I. So. Earlier, I broke off a hook on uh, a piece of structure down there, and I was like, you know what? I'll just do with uh, with two hooks instead of three. The third one that I put on is what I've caught all the fish on. That's crazy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually measure this fish on a uh, official measuring board with my code on my hand. If you guys didn't know, I'm running an online tournament. This video will be out after the tournament ends, but I'll have information linked below for how you guys can join the next online tournament and uh, compete against me. This one should put me in a very solid second place on the first day of competition. So let's get it measured. There are so many smallmouth in this that all follow me just now. I want to see this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you your own A-Rig. So where's your A-Rig? Okay, so there's the you're me coming up on it. There you are right there. So so lower it a little bit. Perfect. Oh my goodness. Right over the top. And there's fish come coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. He's behind it. Oh, oh my gosh. Got him? 
<laughs> my guy, my guy, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. How cool is that? That is if not big, but that was so cool. <laughs> Did you watch it bite it? Yes, too? I watched it come up. <laughs> That's crazy. I literally watched one come up the first time and then I like <laughs> twitched it over the <laughs> and three of them shot up on it. I'm telling you, man, this thing is it sells itself. Oh my god. I like really want to get that for my boat next year. That's actually <laughs> so sick. Oh god. I'm Hey, Rick? Just out in the middle, literally, middle of nowhere. Hey, Rick. Oh, my camera. I'm on the other side. One sec. Let me uh, catch up to this fish, y'all. And I'll come to this. I'll, I'll come to this side. Sorry, folks. Uh, no, you're good. I did not know which side my camera was on. But again, just out in the middle. It's, it's honestly a great way to cover water. Oh, yeah. Like it's deep. Phenomenal. It's, it's almost like a, a deep crankbait, but you got five of them. Well, I guess three in this case, but. We call that insurance. Hey, yo. Awesome. As y'all can see, sometimes you get them twice. More than one hook. Oh, popped out. Hey, 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 hey. Chill, chill, chill. Love it, love it. Oh my. Oh yeah. On the Alabama. <laughs> that was cool. Well done. Well done. Yes, sir. That's a good one. Look at how fat he is. Oh my man, they're well fed. All right. That's, that's awesome. All right. Over. I guess we'll find out. Good stuff.